Hey y'all and welcome to the Stivers Uncensored episode 2. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you all for the great response of everybody joining into this channel. We're really excited about it. Your all's comments, your messages, your emails have been absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I, don't know, I was nervous but I never saw it going so well. So that's been really amazing. <laughs> We're already growing so much and that's just really awesome. Yeah, it's kind of funny with the first channel, you know, the, the urge to get to a thousand subscribers and try to get things monetized. And literally in one day, we almost hit that. So that's pretty awesome. So today, now that everyone is here, um, we decided to play a game this time, basically. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna ask each other three questions that we made up ourselves. She does not know the questions I wrote and I don't know what she wrote. So we have kind of an idea for you all that are watching. Either you can answer along with us. So if I ask the question, wives, um, girlfriends, whatever it may be, um, you all answer the question and vice versa. Yeah. Or you can take this game back, write your own three questions, and use this as a just a fun game um, to play with your spouses. Yeah, but the most important part of the thing is get comfortable with your spouse, get in the mindset that you're gonna be open-minded and 100% honest with each other, yeah. <laughs> because that's the only way that this works. I completely agree, and maybe make sure it's a time that you can be alone. Yes. You can be alone, and you all can have this conversation together, so if you have kids, maybe once the kids are in bed or whatever it is, because. We gave you the warning. This is episode two. So now we're gonna dive in a little bit more. We promise it won't be too crazy, um, but the word sex will definitely come up in this video. So, you ready? I'm ready. Ladies first. Okay, <laughs> I ask you first. Okay, my first question for you is what is your biggest fear about our relationship? <clears throat> biggest fear for our relationship? Um, it's tough because I, I try not to fear in our relationship. Um, but of course, jealousy, different stuff like that just creep in your head unnaturally or unintended. But that isn't what I fear. I don't fear that because I trust you with everything I have. I would say my biggest fear is a, a self issue of wanting to make sure that you always want me. So, so I already just said, uh, like, I, I fear that if I get in a rut or if I get into a situation that I won't be attracted to you or that you'll question your love for me just because of something I'm doing that I don't mean to. And thankfully, within our marriage, we've been able to talk those times out, um, kind of like we are right now. But um, that is definitely a fear I have is just turning you off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your turn. I'm not lucky. <laughs> not lucky. So my first question is why? Kind of funny. <laughs> like with my answer to your first question, why me, and what set me apart for you to choose me as your husband? Mm, that is a very deep and many leveled question. Um, immediately it was your just passion for me. I could see it in your eyes. Um, even every, like the first five minutes of every time that we ever spoke in our lives or spent any kind of time together, you just, you always made me feel like the only person in the room. Like I had your attention, no matter what was going on, no matter the circumstances. Um, you know, some of those times we were in a relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, those conversations that we had, like, they weren't inappropriate at all. But I ever, I always felt like I was the only one yeah. that you were talking to, no matter what was going on. Um, like, two dates later, I realized that you would be the perfect father to our children and the perfect husband because you were protective. You were loving. You were always kind. Even in the times where I pushed you so hard and you could have been angry immediately yeah. but that was never your first reaction you were always gentle and loving and so patient <laughs> your patience has i think has always been the kicker for me i've never met anyone that patient with me because i know nobody has ever loved me that way right well, that's cool i like that it's it's actually kind of funny you said that so for you all watching um we watched a show called uh sex life on Netflix. It's a good show to watch. It's a good couple show to watch. Um, just for memories, it actually brought up a lot of conversations between mm -hmm. her and I too. 
Um, I won't get into the details of it, but another fear I had is that you would only see me as a good father and a good husband. As the safe option. As the safe option and not the the risky guy. Yeah. The guy that's like the one you dream about. You know what I mean? From the pleasurable side of things, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, and I just like I would always be the safe option, but we've actually partially because of that show, we had a lot of those conversations yes, we've and, that. Um, and I no longer feel that way, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is great. But I mean, there, there was definitely times that I was worried that I was just a safe option, yeah. but I do, but I, I don't want to like downplay your answer because I, that is one of the top priorities I want to be. Like, I do want you to feel like I'm the best husband and father that you could have chose, but yeah, just interesting. Yeah. Um, with that and us saying that we have worked through that stuff and those thoughts and you know that time period um if any guys ever feel like that the only way to make it better is to approach your wife with that situation yeah. you have to tell her that that's the way you're feeling because we're never going to see it that way we just don't think that way we're not thinking that you're feeling any sort of way so yeah. when you did approach me with that many times before it was so eye-opening and you know, I could Im immediately confirm that, that that wasn't just it. Like Absolutely. that was a huge part of it that you were so protective and loyal and amazing and loving and patient and kind, but it was always also so much more than that. Yeah. Cool. And that's where we lead into questions number two, at least for mine. I don't know about yeah. yours. Let's <laughs> stop talking about the fluffy stuff that we that I love. <laughs> Um, what makes you feel the most loved? What makes me feel the most loved? Um, I actually told you this earlier before even knowing this question. Um, it's what I can see you wanting me in your eyes. Um, little side note. Um, it's always been the eyes for me. Like, <laughs> I know on this channel, is, is that the third question? <laughs> Why would you even write that? <laughs> Why would you even ask, ask me what like, my top thing is? <laughs> you know the answer to that. Um, Y'all seen it on this channel. The Baby Blues, right? Like that, so, like, from the first initial physical attraction, it, it was, it's always been the eyes for me. Um, hang on, what was, this, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> what makes you feel the most loved? Yes, so... Your eyes being one of the top physical attractions that I first initially have for you, um, now it's the, the emotion I can feel when you <clears throat> when you look at me. Um, it's it's something that is unexplainable, and I just I know it. Like there's different looks that you give me, um, but when I can see that look, I melt. <laughs> I absolutely melt inside. Yeah, I mean it's it's a very good topic because everyone needs to know what your partner does to make you feel loved. Love languages, right? They're mm -hmm. huge. Um, there's many tests out there. If you've never figured out your love language or what you know turns you on or makes you take or makes you feel loved, then definitely take a test online. Yeah. Um, and you know, you'll get the answer and realize what it is, but then you can kind of self-proclaim it and be like, okay, mm -hmm. you can tell your spouse, this is what actually does it for me. And so now that your spouse knows that, they'll mm -hmm. spend more time doing that. And it won't, you know, it won't be forced. It'll become more natural over time. Yeah, I would say my second one, because there's a lot more you do. That's just the first one that came to my head that really makes me feel loved. But I would say like, and from a sexual perspective, like when you touch me, like when I'm not expecting it, and like the rub of the shoulder or like just your nails like across my arm unexpectedly, yeah. like that, that gives the tingle inside mm -hmm. and that's pretty odd. Which is important too. I mean, when you're doing anything, when you're cooking, when you're, mm -hmm. somebody's on the laptop, you know, when you're working, when you just get home from work, just touch physical your spouse. Touch. Yeah. Physical touch. It's, I have learned a lot <laughs> in that area. <laughs> my body talks. <laughs> All right, now for yours. Yeah, it's very it's very similar to yours. I just, I guess I use more direct terming. What's something non-sexual that I do that turns you on? Um, gosh, there's a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of acts of service, and that one's not necessarily my love language 
for you to perform acts of service. And I'm not, I'm not talking about sexually. I'm talking about like cleaning or, you know, doing the dishes when, you know, I'm swamped or busy or if I'm homeschooling the kids, you do the laundry. All that stuff is extremely important. It just shows me that you're thinking of our entire life together. Yeah. You know, not just the moment to moment or the stress. Like you're thinking, what can I do to help her alleviate something off her plate or, you know, just to pitch in because everybody should be pitching in. Um, I don't think that's the top one. Though. <laughs> While you're thinking, I give you a minute break there. Um, cause I would like to explain or talk a little bit about chores and cleaning and how stuff, but you keep thinking, I'll talk for a second. Um, I actually have thought about this, but even before her, um, I've been very involved with doing chores and like house stuff. And I'm, I 100% don't think that anything's gender specific. Like we're not saying that the women clean, that's not this household. Um, I also was raised very primarily with women. Um, my mother, my grandmother, um, my babysitter was my aunt and cousin. They were both female. So I was, I was just around strong female pre presence or presence a lot in my childhood. Um, and they engraved in me that, you know, everybody has their work to do here. Um, it's just whatever needs to be done, you get it done. It doesn't matter who should be doing it. And that's something that just raising up, I wanted to make sure that like specifically Wyatt knew, but also Raylan. Like I, I wanted Raylan to understand to like, don't fall into to those gender roles that are in the past. Um, I wanted to make sure that they see their father um, and the husband to their mother cleaning dishes, doing laundry. We share this stuff. Um, so that, that was always important to me. I'm glad you value that because it, it's important to me to do as well. Um, I think it just, it goes back to physical touch. Mm -hmm. uh, but m most specifically, in the morning, you always kiss me. Yeah. Every morning. There hasn't been a morning where you don't kiss me good morning mm -hmm. or, you know, you get me fresh water in my tumbler. Yeah. Just silly little stuff like that that means so much because I know that I'm on your mind. Yeah. Oh, good. Question number three. Your turn. My turn. Um, when did you first know you loved me? Uh, before we even dated. Um, I, I think I already knew I had that. Before the bar? Yeah. I mean, just our moments that we had in the past. Um, I think I fought it, but I felt it. Like, when we would have those special moments at Fran's house or stuff like that. When I say special moments, y'all, like, I mean... We would talk and talk and talk and the next thing i know nobody's around us like we started with a group of people around us next thing it's just her and i sitting at the table it was always respectful most time well, she was always in a relationship as you all know that most time i was gonna say that <laughs> most time i was as well um we was always respectful but man it was just it's like where did the time go like what happened like next time i just remember sitting down it's basically a replica of our course nights now. Yeah. And we would just talk until 4 a.m. And then we were like, first of all, why is it 4 a.m.? And second of all, where is everybody at? Yeah, it's almost like everybody's like, we're going to leave these two alone. Right. You know, like they would all it was end... always appropriate. Like, yeah, absolutely. It was always appropriate. Um, it was just one of those that after, it would happen like once, like every four months mm -hmm. or something like that. And it would be like, oh my God, like I just, I keep thinking about her. Yeah for too long and then it's like I finally try to stop and then we'd have another one of those nights you know that we would just kind of chit chat um so I think in my heart I knew before that um but I would say officially it was uh, after Memorial Day yeah when you came um on Memorial Day weekend which that's a funny story too should we dive into that right now like should I tell that story should, or should we say that for another one it's a really funny story is it <laughs> yeah it is it's a great one um so there's so much to it though there's well, parts that aren't funny <laughs> <laughs> but i'm gonna keep it to the the light stuff um so if you got the first video um i mentioned that memorial day weekend when we started dating was kind of in my opinion a turning point of our relationship um she really stuck her neck out she really went out of her box out of her comfort zone and she decided to come with me on memorial day weekend um, to me, that was, she couldn't have done something bigger for me. Like that, she was showing commitment towards my side. Um, and when she came, you know what I mean? 
Well, when she came, like, uh, it was, it was awkward a little bit because this was our first kind of big ordeal. It was also completely with my family. Yeah, I would like to mention it wasn't just a camping trip with him. Right. It was him and like 45 family members. My family, we... Some we, of which I had met on previous dates. Some of which I had never seen in my entire life. Right. So, we were big boating people. Like, every holiday weekend, we were on the lake. We would go camping, and then we would go boating. So, like, this was a plan. Then. Like, we, we were all going to do it, and I just decided to invite him. Like, we got room on the pontoon if you want to come. Um... So I could understand her nervousness to come. Well, <laughs> yeah, I remember I said I was a part of you and this kind of stuff. She tells me, I don't know, like midday, the first, was it the first night? Second night. I don't like, know where you're going with this. With your, I don't know with, your, with, with your parents, Kevin. Oh, um, it was probably the, the first day. Yeah, yeah. So first day boating trip, camping night is usually the wildest night. And so we're, we're pretty three sheets to the wind. And I know this about them. Right. I'm oh, sorry. yeah. Like, wasn't thinking it. In the My family knows how to get down, especially when after you've been in the sun all day and you're sitting around a fire at night. She tells me that her parents are coming. And now I had met Karen, her mm -hmm. mom. A yeah, few, you two are very close. Yeah, I, I knew her very well. But her stepdad, Larry, I, I don't really know that I ever actually met him. I don't think so. Um, even the times, like, we, we had homecoming pictures at her house, and we worked together, like, in the past. But I don't think I ever met Larry. Um, so, she's like, they're going to come camp with us. And I was like... I don't know why in my head <laughs> I didn't ever decided that that was a good idea. I was like... I knew it was going to be fun. I knew it was going to be a party. I didn't know it was going to be to the level that it was. <laughs> so, obviously, once it got that way, I'm thinking, I really regret inviting my parents. <laughs> so... I think but I, also, I'm thinking I'm going to I'm going to marry this man. Like right. I know I am. So let's rip the band-aid off. Might as well rip the bandaid yeah. off. So I was now like, are you sure? <laughs> like you sure that's a good idea? Like you've seen how this group is, what are we progressing to for the rest it didn't of the help evening? That my parents didn't get there until about nine thirty at night. It might have been even later than that. Um, <laughs> so we're all sitting around a campfire. You actually brought a whipped cream. Was it whipped cream? Yeah, it was like brunette vodka. So it was terrible. Some kind of flavor thing. So it was like toasted marshmallow. Or toasted marshmallow. Like, oh, that's what it was. Be good by the fire. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, but she's bringing this to like a bunch of. Moon, it was cheap. It was all I could right. Afford. She's bringing to a bunch of moonshine drinkers, yeah, like and homemade I'm, moonshine I'm drinkers. I'm bringing a contribution. You yeah. Know? I don't have. I can't afford like a case of beer or a a nice bottle of wine. So here's right. a burnet. <laughs> So there's a rule, and maybe some of y'all are used to this if you're 80s, 90s babies. Once a bottle opens when you're sitting in a circle around a campfire, it gets passed around the campfire until it's gone. Mm -hmm. Please tell me somebody in the comments that, like, my family just didn't create this. Like, I always just felt like it was a thing. Like, that's what people did. So this thing starts getting passed around, but everybody hates it. No, it's terrible. It's absolutely I terrible. It. I mean... <laughs> It was so funny. I'm faking it the whole time. I'm Everybody throwing it up. Hey, so this thing's going around a hundred. It never moved. Like this yeah, time. Yeah, a hundred times. And we're all like, looking around. Lo and behold, we end up finally killing that thing. And everybody's pretty sloshed <laughs> at this time. Well, here comes her parents rolling in. So late at night. So late. It's pitch black. And I'm like, we can call it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're right beside us. And we, us, as we do, come over and like, hey, man, first off, nice to meet you. Um, I'm not sure if we're dating or not, but I'm with you. I'm with your daughter. She's here with me. She's here with me. Uh, I'm Zach. It's good to meet you. <laughs> you know, like doing this number. And Larry starts putting up their tent. It's a, it's a hiking mm -hmm. tent, you know, like, tent. yeah, like real small, easy like, the simplest thing to put together, ever. Larry's feeling awkward. We're not. <laughs> we're, we're suggesting all kinds of things. We're all trying to put up this daggone tent. I mean, it took us hours. Mm -hmm. I could feel, like, now that I know Larry, I bet he was ready to, like, throw us all in the pond. Mm -hmm. Like, just, yeah. just get rid of all of us. Because and my it, mom's thinking, well, I know Zach, but I don't know him this way. Right, like, right. What's happening right now? So, long story short, the tent finally does get up, but they truly got a good glimpse of who we were. And then, so, we all go to bed, 
And I remember waking up and <laughs> Ken's tapping on my tent where she's at. Jennifer, are you sleeping in the same bed with him? And all I hear is my son, she's going to be pregnant too much. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> and then, Can't believe it. And then I'll never forget laying there. I mean, I'm so hungover. I'm laying there after we just had that event with Karen and Larry. I don't know how, but Ellie, her she dog. I took Ellie with me and I'm just not myself. I'm <laughs> well out of my element. <laughs> And I'm just thinking, I'll open the tent door and she'll go pee and she'll come back. And then so we're laying there, still just like, I'm kind of trying. She's saying no. <laughs> you know, that's, that stuff's not happening. Then here comes my mom. My mom <laughs> dipped it on the tent door. Uh, Ellie ran away and we can't get her. She went down to the dock and we both said, let her go. Yeah, she'll come back. <laughs> she'll come back. <laughs> So we all get out of the tent. Oh, poor Ellie. Poor, yeah, she's back here. She, she was a spring chicken back then. She's a little bit older now. Here in the town. So we all get out. And we're all sitting around the, the fire that destroyed us all the previous night. And I'll never forget my cousin Shane. He's walking over to the cooler to get a, a water or something. And all I remember him saying is, well, that's not where a camera belongs. <laughs> he pulls out this digital camera. <laughs> I still think it was me to this day. Um, I had a really stupid habit of hiding stuff back then. Tell me what you would, do with the keys. When I would get too intoxicated, one time I woke up and my keys and my wallet were in my mailbox. <laughs> I don't know. I just did weird stuff like that. The thing still worked, though. It made it. And uh, somehow, by the grace of God, we all made it through that weekend. We sure did. It was so hot, too. Uh -huh. uh, my dad, his uh, his parents came with their camper or their RV. We were all just in that bad way with the AC. It was yeah. so bad. Um, as awkward as that weekend was with my parents and your parents and your extended family, somehow we all got back to normal after that and Larry didn't kill you. He did not kill me. I, you asked me to marry you like two months later and he said yes. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> but the, to get back to the original question, that was the turning point. That's what I knew I loved you because I knew if we could go through that together, mm -hmm. it'd be cool and not even argue. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. I was like, we got this. I remember so normally on the way home from that trip, like talking about credit scores and stuff. Yes. <laughs> we were like, well, we might as well get into it because we can't really go back from this. Looks right. like we should probably get married. <laughs> we're like, so do you have any debt? <laughs> we were both like, yeah, like a lot of <laughs> yeah, a lot. Like, <laughs> What's that? A credit score? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That was funny. Good question. That sparked a good, good story there. You ready for yours? Sure. Yeah. Look at that. It's <laughs> <laughs> what does sex mean to you? <clears throat> um, well, I think I feel like we've had this conversation in a weird way before. Maybe yeah. with other people. I don't know. Yeah, we're talking about it. Um to me and well, I think it's different to everyone, right? To me, it has always meant intimacy. Mm -hmm. Sex has never just been sex for me. And I know we come from very different backgrounds in that area, and that's okay. <laughs> We've accepted it. <laughs> no. Well, that, that'll be for another video. <laughs> but it, it means intimacy with yeah. you for me, whether it's conventional or not conventional. It's something that we connect on a very deep level with, and um, it's a necessary thing for us mm -hmm. I mean I think it should be for anyone but it is for us um, I don't know how any married couple can function without being connected in that way and feeling intimate mm -hmm. um, I think if it's absent then there's a problem it doesn't always mean that it's a huge problem it's something you can work through and uh, we've had our it's draft, always, it's we've had our draft spells as well we've yeah. had many, many dry spells throughout the years, throughout 11 years. But I know that when we are intimate, we are connected on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. Arguments don't mean as much. Disagreements over stupid stuff just don't matter. Mm -hmm. You're not frustrated with daily life things that would normally frustrate you. 
um, you have a clearer mind. <laughs> yeah, you really do. You're not foggy headed. You're not focusing on something that's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always been just a very important piece of our marriage. Yeah, I completely agree. And I agree that it should be for every marriage. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think you hit all the top points, but it's just like you, like the patience stuff that you're talking about, like even patience, like that runs dry mm -hmm. and thin. Yeah. Um, because I mean, you're 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 sexually frustrated. Like mm -hmm. that's that's something that happens. You have committed yourself to one person, and if that's not happening for a really long time, then yeah. it's your body's going to speak to you. <clears throat> um, if you've caught us from our previous channel, you know we're very big on like natural healing with our, our herbal products and different stuff that we do that way. Sex is one of those yeah. herbal healings. Like it's that is a, a very natural yeah. thing that must happen. <laughs> it absolutely has to. Yeah. Um, and then once you figure that out in yourself, where then talking about it, like yeah. what, what are, what's better and worse for you? Like, okay, let's not, let's just say we're having it. Right. Like, let's try to make sure that it's, to the best it can be right between and each other frequency and right there's so many factors that go into it and i think we can probably put that on another video yeah but yeah i mean there's just a lot there's it has to be 100 percent open and honest to mm -hmm. figure out what your spouse needs and what you need yeah and i mean that's just as blunt as i can put it because your needs aren't always going to be the same mm -hmm. some days are going to be different some years are going to be different there can be a long time when Things are the same and you agree on it. And then there can come a time when everything changes and your spouse needs something com completely different. Yeah. And I mean, it's scientific fact that men have a higher want early on in life yeah. and women have it later on in life. And so if you just think that what's going on right now is going to be the same right. 20 years from now, then you're fooling yourself yeah. and your marriage because we change. I always say the saying that like people don't change. We do. Everything changes. <laughs> everything changes. The only thing that stays the same is everything changes. Exactly. <laughs> Tracy Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's why you have to have such an open line of communication yeah. about, you know, I know, like, in the past, like, this is what I wanted, but, mm -hmm. like, now this is kind of where my mind's going. has nothing to do with you, literally just my body yeah. talking to me. Um, and making sure that you're able to do that without getting hurt feelings. Yes. Um, is such an important piece of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we did it perfect every time. No, you know, like we're we're we have most definitely not right because you're you're so emotionally connected with one another. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard sometimes not to take it personal um, because you think it's strictly something that you've done, mm -hmm. um, but it's not. It's just we're changing, and now we're calling out specifically where what we want. Yeah, yeah. that was vulnerable. That was that was good. I mean, going for um, from the intro to like diving right into it. Um, and it won't all be that, I guess, intense. Yeah. I don't want to say I was taking intense because I mean, it was kind of vanilla. <laughs> like we're getting there, but I mean, it, they're not all going to be that way, but it is, but to us, all the stuff that we answered and asked was important. And the reason yeah. we randomly asked each other very similar questions and a lot of them had to do with that is because it's important to us. Yeah. Um, so let us know down in the comments. Um, first off, did you answer our questions? Mm -hmm. Did you create your own questions? Um, and then if you have questions that you would like us to ask, yep. here's an interesting way that we can kind of play this channel too. You can ask us questions that we can answer that maybe will help you and your spouse mm -hmm. answer them to each other. Um, we're happy to do so. Like yes. I said, that, that's part of this channel is to help the communication lines happen. So if you have a question for us, we'll answer it. Even if you don't, you don't have to tell us like you want my, I don't, yeah. I want my spouse to answer this. Just ask us the question, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll try to bring it into ours, and then maybe that can spark um, a conversation. Yeah, about. and if you don't want to comment it, shoot us an email. Yeah, we'll keep it anonymous. We're not. None of the questions we're going to be like so and so asked this. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to bring up names whatsoever yeah. in this um, within our personal life, since our family, um, or you all. So we actually do have an email specifically for this channel. Um, I will have it down in the description and we'll throw it in the comments, but it is the stivers uncensored at gmail.com. So if you know our channel name, you know our email, yep. um, that way we'll have that specifically for here. And that doesn't get lost in the stivers homestead email because that one can get a little while yeah. sometimes. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. Our one and only hope is that this inspires you to keep having conversations and being honest and open with your spouse, um, married, unmarried, straight, not straight. It, none of that matters to us. 
Um, we are here to facilitate love in every possible way that we can. And I think that's that's my goal. I don't oh, know, yeah. that's your goal. I just, Absolutely. We love love. We, we love witnessing love and we love inspiring love. So. Can hear him. Love you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're new around here and you're catching this video, we are trying to do at least two a week. Um, don't host that to every week. We are running two channels now, um, but we're trying to get at least two out here a week, um, especially as it's new and fresh and with the response that we're getting. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll be back real soon to y'all. Yeah, we love y'all. What did you say the first time? See you next time. <laughs> See you next time. Not until the next one. Nope. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. This bar is kicking us back here. Bye. It is go today. Bye.